Hi, it's Dr. Ross Tarbert, and today we're going to be talking about elasticity. All right, uh, elasticity is a pretty broad concept in economics. It's the concept of the responsiveness of a market. Okay, responsiveness of a market to changes in other economic variables. All right, so changes in economic variables such as the price of the good in that market, all right, the price of other goods, so the effect of changes in one market on another market, or on things like income, for example. All right, so let's deal with the first concept first, all right? How does a change in price affect a market all right this is this is known as the own price elasticity of demand own price elasticity of demand a lot of times it's just called price elasticity of demand or sometimes just elasticity of demand because this is the concept that most people know even though elasticity is a lot broader than this okay so what we're what we're looking at here is Look, we know from the law of demand, we have a relationship like this, okay? As the price of something goes up, the quantity demanded of that thing goes down, right? But our next question, of course, is how much? The price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down, but exactly how much? How responsive is it? Is it very responsive or is it not very responsive? That's where elasticity of demand or own price elasticity of demand really attempts to measure, okay? And it does that by looking at the relative changes relative to one another, okay? So in other words, relative change, percentage change, okay? And relative to one another, that means one is divided by the other, okay? We're gonna use this symbol to stand for price elasticity of demand and it is the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in the price. All right, you guys remember from our discussion on supply and demand, Q with the superscript D right here represents quantity demanded, okay? The amount that the buyers are willing and able to buy at a given price. And P stands for price, okay? Anytime you see this triangle, that's a delta, that means change in. And if the percentage sign is in front of that, percentage change, okay? Percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So what we're looking at here, what we're particularly interested in is the size of one relative to the other, okay? So there's different possibilities going on here, right? So let's say, for example, that the percentage change So let's say, for example, that the percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in the price. Like, let's say this happens, okay? The price goes up 5%, but the quantity demanded goes down by 10%. Okay, so our, our measure, our elasticity of demand in this situation, well, we're going to take the quantity demanded, the negative 10%, and we're gonna divide by the change in the price, which is positive 5%, all right? So we, we get negative 10 over positive five. Now they're both in percent, so the percent part is gonna drop out and we're just gonna have 10, negative 10 over five. We're gonna have negative two, okay? So with the price elasticity of demand, we're gonna go ahead and take the absolute value of that. And so we're left with an elasticity of demand here of two, okay? And this would be considered to be very responsive to the price change. And so an elasticity of demand of two, we call it elastic, right? That means it is responsive, okay? The percentage change in the quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in the price Let's, let's say this situation is reversed, though, all right? Let's say 
that the percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in the price. Let's say, say the, the shoe's on the other foot now, all right? So we've got a 10% a, a increase in the price. We know the, the quantity demanded is gonna go down, that's the law of demand, but the question is how much? Let's say it goes down by a 5%, all right? So now again, we're gonna create or elasticity of demand, percentage change, quantity demand is on top, percentage change in the price in the bottom. So now we're gonna have negative 5% over positive 10%, like so, all right? We've got negative one half, negative 0.5, and of course we're just gonna drop that and we're just gonna call it 0.5, all right? So an elasticity of demand of 0.5 <clears throat> would be considered inelastic, all right? So what we're getting here is if elasticity of demand is less than one, that's inelastic demand, okay? Meaning it's not very responsive to changes in price, all right? And what we mean by that, what we mean by not very responsive is the percentage change in the quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in the price, all right? However, like in our first example, if the elasticity of demand is greater than one, then it's elastic, okay? And elastic means it is responsive, okay? It is responsive. So elastic, responsive, same thing, all right? We're using those words basically as synonyms to say how responsive is it, okay? And of course, the final possibility is that the elasticity of demand is simply equal to one. And this is just called unit elastic. It means that's eh, right in the middle. You know, we, we created this ratio and that leaves open the possibility that it's exactly equal. Okay, so it's uh, again, right in the middle. All right. So by the way, the concept of, of elasticity comes from Alfred Marshall in uh, Alfred Marshall is part of the neoclassical school, part of the marginalist revolution in the, uh, the late 1800s. And it comes from his uh, Principles of Economics book, uh, which came out in the, in the late 1800s. Uh, and we, we teach the concept of elasticity pretty much identical to how Marshall set it up, uh, just showing some of his influence on economic thought. All right, so let's, let's just take a look at this and, and We'll, we'll do an example here. So let's say that we have a demand curve, which looks like this. We've got quantity demanded here, price here, and we've got a downward sloping curve. Okay, that's demand. And what we, we know, again, law of demand, price increases, quantity demand is gonna decrease. But let's say, again, we wanna know how much, okay? So here's our situation. Let's say that at an initial point A, the quantity demanded is 100,000 and the price, let's say $3. And we're moving to a point, let's say B, where the price has gone up to say $6. Uh, and the quantity demanded has also been affected. The quantity demand has gone to, let's say, 60,000. All right, so this gives us the ability to say, okay, what is, the, what is the elasticity of demand moving from A to B, okay? Elasticity of demand equals what? Going from point A to point B. Now we come to the issue of how do we actually calculate this, okay? Like we've said, the elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price, okay? The most straightforward way of calculating these percentage changes would be to just, you know, typically the way that we can't calculate a percentage change is we go like this, okay? So percentage change in anything is the new one minus the old one divided by the old one and then we multiply that by a hundred to get it into percentage format all right so if we use that method we get something called the point price elasticity of demand all right so 
point price elasticity of demand. So in other words, that would say, all right, elasticity of demand, we're gonna take the new quantity demanded, subtract from that the old quantity demanded, divide by the old quantity demanded, multiply by 100 to put that in percentage terms, and we're gonna do the same for the price. All right, new price minus the old price, divided by the old price, and again, multiply that by 100. Now this last part isn't that important because since we have the same thing on the top as the bottom, the multiply by 100 is just gonna drop out. All right, so we end up with new minus old quantity over old quantity, new minus old price over old price. This is the most straightforward way of calculating the elasticity of demand. And you can see, let's just label on our, on our graph here, which is new and which is old, okay? This is the initial situation. So the old quantity is 100,000. The old price is $3. The new quantity is 60,000. And the new price is $6, all right? So we put in, let's put it underneath it. 60,000 minus 100,000. Um, divided by 100,000 on top. And then we have to do the same thing for the, the price on the bottom, okay? The new price is $6, the old price is $3, and we're gonna divide by $3. Okay, so we have a complex fraction here. We need to reduce it, all right? There's a number of ways of doing this. We could, uh, we could see, all right, on, on top here, 60,000 minus 100,000 is gonna give us negative 40,000 divided by 100,000. Um, okay, and then on the bottom, we've got uh, three over three, which is just one, right? So six minus three is three on top here, divided by three is gonna be one. Okay, so anything divided by one, uh, this is just, this is the same thing, right? So that goes away and we end up with negative 40,000 over 100,000. This is negative 0.4, okay? If you don't feel comfortable uh, doing that in your head, it's perfectly fine, use a calculator. Uh, and again, we're gonna just drop the sign to give us 0.4, okay? So our conclusion here for this is we'd say, all right, the elasticity of demand equals 0.4, the own price elasticity of demand. And what this means is this is a market that's not very responsive to changes in the price, okay? So if we go back, take a look at this, what's going on here? The price has doubled, okay? The price has increased 100%. The quantity demanded has fallen, yes, but it's fallen by less than that. It's fallen by 40%, okay? So this is a market that is, is it's responding, but not a huge amount relative to that big, big price change. All right, so elasticity, demand of 0.4, we would call that inelastic. And if we wanted to go on with our interpretation, we'd say, all right, for each 1% uh, increase in the price, the quantity demanded is going to decrease by 0.4 percent, right? That would be a, a statement that we could make that would be correct given all that we know. There's another formula for elasticity of demand which is known as the arc price elasticity of demand. And this is, it's the same formula. Everyone uses the same formula, okay? Percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in the price. It's just that we're arriving at that a little bit differently. We are using the midpoint rather than the, uh, just simply the new minus the old. So in other words, here's what we're doing, okay? We're, we're taking the new quantity, subtracting from that the old quantity, that's, that's the same, but we're gonna divide that by the midpoint of the two quantities. And the midpoint is arrived at by taking the new one, adding it to the old one, and dividing by two, all right? So this is gonna give us a little bit more uh, longer, a little bit more complicated formula. 
because this is all what's on top, all right? Then we still have to do the price. So to do that, we're gonna take the new price, subtract from that the old price, divide that by the new price plus the old price divided by two. Okay, so formula looks a little bit uglier. It's a little bit more complicated to calculate. The real, only the real benefit of this, um, you know, this is, I, I, I personally like this less because this is not the traditional way of calculating percentages. The traditional way of calculating percentages is new minus old over old, like, like we did on the last page there, all right? This is a different method. It's, um, mathematicians like this because the primary benefit is if we go from A to B versus we go from B to A, this will give us the same result, okay, going in both directions. Um, you know, versus the, the, the point uh, formula will not give us the same result because, of course, the one that's old changes, all right? So the only real benefit of the midpoint formula, in my view, is that it, that's what it does. Um, so anyway, let's, let's go ahead and put in our numbers and we'll just see. We will actually get a different result here. Uh, all right, so again, we're going to put in our values. So the, the new quantity, uh, 60,000, the old quantity, 100,000, all right? And then we're going to divide by the midpoint, okay? So the new one plus the old one divided by 2, okay? So 60,000 plus 100,000 and divide that by 2. All right, that's on the bottom. Then we're gonna do the same for the price, okay? The new price, six, the old price, three, and we're gonna divide by the midpoint, six plus three, divided by two. All right, now you might be able to see very quickly what the midpoint is on each one of these. So you might be able to skip this step uh, if you're good with numbers. Um, I wrote them all out just to make sure we're all on the same page here, okay? so. Again, we're gonna get negative 40,000 on top, but on the bottom, we get 160,000 divided by two, and that is 80,000, okay? And then on the bottom, we get six minus three, that's three, but we're gonna divide by the midpoint of six and three, so that's nine divided by two, which is 4.5, all right? so. Again, we've got a complex fraction. We need to reduce that. Uh, negative 40,000 over 80,000 is negative one half. And three over 4.5 uh, is uh, two thirds. All right, so one half over two thirds, this is equal, equal to, we can multiply it by the reciprocal, all right? We take the bottom number, or bottom fraction, flip it around, okay? And so we end up with negative three-fourths, okay? So negative one times three, <coughs> excuse me, negative three, and then two times two is four, so negative three-fourths. And we're gonna just drop that sign and we'll call it 0.75. Okay, this gives us a slightly different result. In terms of for our testing purposes, I'm going to just make it crystal clear which formula you need to use. So, because they, they do they often yield slightly different results. Uh, so if I ask you to do this on a test or a quiz or whatever, uh, I will say, you know, use the the midpoint formula or or use the use the point formula. Okay. Um, and you'll you'll always have access to these formulas uh, on any test situation.